Welcome on God's Peace to you. I'm Pastor Zachariah Shippen. And I'm Pastor Emily Shipman. We serve the Northwest United Lutheran Parish in the towns of Crosby, Ambrose, Alamo, and Wild Rose, North Dakota. It is our prayer as you watch this video that you would hear God's word for your life today and that your faith in God will grow. May you come to know God's love for you more and more each day. Just a heads up on the readings today. I'm going to be preaching from the Isaiah text, so that's the one I'm going to read. Uh, and Jane has been willing to read, is willing to read the gospel text. So we're actually going to start with that. So if you would please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The gospel comes from Matthew 5, 13 to 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until it's all accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Our psalm today comes from Psalm 112, 1 through 9. Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. They will not be afraid of any evil, evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever, and they will hold up their head with honor. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 12, a reading from 1 Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak in wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within. So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, that we may understand the gifts bestowed upon us by God. The word of the Lord. And folks can sit. <laughs> Our Old Testament reading this day is from Isaiah, the 58th chapter. And I invite you to pay attention to these words. 
Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. Oh, they delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast but you do not see? Why humble ourselves but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice? To undo the thongs of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free? And to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them? and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and He will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Here ends our text. And I invite the kids to come forward. So many suckers. Good morning. So today is Boy Scout Sunday, right? Awesome. So I'm going to put you Boy Scouts on a little bit, little bit of a test. You guys have a motto, right, for Boy Scouts? Do you guys remember it? Okay, if you can't remember the whole thing, what parts do you remember? Do your best. I don't know sign language. <laughs> nice. And there's another. There's a Boy Scout creed too, right? Isn't there? It's like really long, and it tells you what you're supposed to be and do in the world. You guys remember that? It talks about you know serving your neighbors and and being. You don't remember? That's okay. Do you have any Boy Scouts in the crowd who remember that? Really? All right. Well, it's a call to be good citizens in the world. To love your neighbor, to help those in need, uh, to be clean and to be prepared and to be all these things, right? Okay, and this is Boy Scouts helping you to be prepared for the world. Boy Scouts is a, is a club kind of thing you can be involved in. It's really cool. Yeah, you talk to your dad about it. Maybe he'll let you be in it. 
perfect. So the Boy Scouts is an organization that teaches young men how to be good citizens, right? I mean, you learn how to be and do cool stuff like build birdhouses and uh, serve in the community like you're doing today, helping out at church, right? And it's, I think it's really cool. So thank you for being a part of it. You guys are great. But also, God also calls us to do things kind of just like that. To love our neighbors. To be good to our friends and to be good to our enemies. Even people who are mean to us. To love them. Dad. To be what? Dad and mom. To love your dad and mom. Yeah. It happens. So our text from Isaiah talks about what God wants us to do in the world. He wants us to free people from oppression. We know what oppression is. It's a big word. No. Oppression is when people aren't treated like people. Okay? So that's what oppression is. So we've seen that in our country in slavery. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Martin Luther King Jr., he spoke out against oppression. You're right. Absolutely. And so God calls us to do that too. Is to speak out against when people aren't treated like people. What is this? This is a robe that I get to wear. Yep. That's a microphone. Well, we're getting off topic. So God calls us to be people who are nice to other people, who see other people as people. Not, not people to pick on, not people to be mean to, but people we're supposed to love and care about and be friends with. Do you think you guys can do that? To be friends? To not bully other people? To be nice to one another? Awesome. That's what God hopes for you, to be nice to other people and to love them and to help them when they need help. And I'm glad that the Boy Scouts help teach you that too. It's good. Can we pray? Let's pray. You want to hold hands? No? Well, if you want to, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these kids who have come up here to hear about you. I ask that you inspire these children to grow more and more in how you would have them live their lives. I ask that you be present with them to comfort and guide them and to give them strength for the days and years ahead. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming up. The buttons are to turn the microphone on and off. Yep, yep, good question. So our text from Isaiah is an interesting text. Were you guys listening? Did you feel a little convicted? Maybe a little bit? Hopefully. Hopefully you felt a little convicted. Uh, in our text, Isaiah is not tiptoeing around the issue of justice and service. Isaiah's message for the Israelites hits them and us like a ton of bricks. Isaiah is breaking down the notion that God only desires worship, fasting, and spiritual practices. The Israelites in our text today seem to be people who truly desired to know God. They claim that day after day they were seeking God and delighted to know God's ways. They delighted in worship and in the traditions of their faith. They asked God, why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? They were doing many religious actions. They were attending worship. They were praying. They thought they were doing all the right things for God. And yet Isaiah accuses them. Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. 
When I hear these words, I think about Christianity within our culture today. Especially today. Today is Super Bowl Sunday, right? So we're going we're gonna to come to it for an hour here, and we're going to rush home, make sure we have all of the snacks and things prepared for Super Bowl parties. Some of us, maybe? Is that the plan for the day? I hear some nervous giggles. I think maybe. <laughs> As Christians in the United States, it seems that to be a Christian, we must attend worship on Sunday. We must come here to listen and learn and fast from other activities we might otherwise engage in on a Sunday morning. We dedicate an hour a week for God. And in that hour, we worry about the ways that we worship, what songs we sing, what words we say, what the building is like that we worship in. And this becomes the focus of congregation. The worship service on Sundays become the focus of church activity. Sunday service becomes what the church is for and what the church is about. And once the worship service is done, then you're free to go about your day however you'd like, however you choose, right? No, exactly. But we like to think that. And we have an early, we got the early service now with the Catholics, so we got to really rush out of here. We're going to get a table at the rooster. So there are important things. But when I hear this text from Isaiah, it convicts me. Isaiah seems to be pointing a finger at me and at us, saying, you're doing it wrong. For the Israelites were focused on their worship. They were focused on praising God, giving God thanks, fasting, and other spiritual practices. But while they were doing these things, they were serving their own interests quarreling among themselves, not caring about those who are oppressed. Does this sound like a congregation of the United States or what? We quarrel among ourselves about many things, what color the carpet should be, what kind of songs we should sing, what kind of coffee we should serve, what time worship should be held. Do these things sound familiar? Maybe a little bit. When we talk about the budget, it often comes back to focus on ourselves, our own interests, our own needs, the needs of the building. And yet Isaiah says today, point blank, is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Isaiah is asking, is this truly what God desires, an hour a week set aside for worship? Is this truly what you would call a day acceptable to the Lord? Do you really think this is all that God desires from you? And the answer is a resounding no. Isaiah continues by illustrating what it is that God truly desires from us. Isaiah says, Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them? and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Isaiah is calling the Israelite people to reflect on their lives, and us as well. This is what God desires from you, to loose the bonds of injustice, to free the oppressed, to share with the hungry, to bring the poor into your home to clothe the naked, to be present and available to your brothers and sisters of the world. This is what God desires from you and from me. This is what is acceptable to God. This is how God calls us to live. And Jesus speaks about this throughout his ministry 
all the time, calling people to love one another as we love ourselves. And if we look at our world today, specifically our country, we see people who are being oppressed. We see people who are being denied legal access to our country, who previously had every right to come and be present among us. We see hatred rearing its ugly head, crying out for us to fear our neighbor instead of love them. We see prejudice and racism crying out for us to see certain people groups as enemies rather than our brothers and sisters we are called to love and support. We see xenophobia, the fear of an entire group of people, specifically those who practice Islam, in our media all the time. Xenophobia is being preached in the media to say that injustice and oppression and suffering is acceptable when it comes to those people. The same pattern has been used by humanity for centuries. This happened in Germany during the Nazi rule when they turned their attention against the Jews claiming they were not human like the rest of us. That they were somehow less. Somehow they should be feared. This happened here in the United States during World War II when we made all the Japanese Americans register and force them into concentration camps. Our country, brothers and sisters, is again at a turning point to choose whether we will see those who are Muslims as our enemies or as our brothers and sisters for whom Christ died also. God's call is clear as to what we are to do. We are to loose the bonds of injustice. To let the oppressed go free. To share what we have with those in need. To bring the homeless into our homes. to be present and to love our neighbors, our brothers and sisters of this world. We are to break the walls that divide us, brothers and sisters. To break the walls of hatred. To break the walls of fear. That prevent us from loving one another. To break down the walls that claim that some are better than others. To break down the walls that prevent certain people from having value and rights and freedom. This is our call as people who follow Jesus. This means, brothers and sisters, that our work is not done after our worship service today. This means that if we truly want to follow God, our work begins when we leave this place. We come here to be reminded, to be reoriented, to be inspired for the work God calls us to. And our work is outside this building. Our work is outside of this one hour once a week. Our work is actually advocating for justice, advocating for peace, advocating for the rights of all human beings, advocating for freedom from oppression, welcoming strangers into our country and into our homes, into our lives, so that we can love them and tell them about Jesus. For Isaiah says, if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, 
the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom shall be like the noonday sun. Then, brothers and sisters, we will be a light for the world. Then, as Jesus speaks in our gospel text, then our light will shine before others and they will see our good works and give glory to God. So, brothers and sisters, what will you do this week to advocate for justice? What will you do this week to break the chains of oppression? What will you do this week to welcome the homeless poor into your homes? What will you do this week to share your bread with the hungry? What will you do this week to be present with our brothers and sisters in our community and around the world? Will you be in contact with our state representative? Will you take action to be informed with what is happening here in the United States and around the world? Will you watch the news and pray for our broken world? Will you talk with others about God's call for peace and justice in our world? Will you serve God throughout the week instead of just an hour today? Will you be inspired by the words of Isaiah to change the way you live in order to love and serve God and our neighbors? It is my prayer that you will take seriously Isaiah's call to action on behalf of our neighbors and the world so that God might look at us and rejoice. Amen. We would love to have you join us sometime for worship. Here is our parish worship schedule and our contact information. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.